Thanks for tuning in, guys. We missed you last week. Uh, ah, now I'm doing as all. I have to make one of those work, you know. Yeah. Now I can't. Do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks for. Uh, oh, now it's ah. Uh. Well, hey, thanks, guys, for actually tuning in this week. Uh, we missed you last week, uh, but here's what you missed. Last week, we installed the decals and drivetrain in our General Lee. Today, Dave begins installing its interior and readies the Plum Crazy Victim Challenger for its 440, which Mark is going to build. They're coming to get you, Barbara. The unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman. And together, we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. camera boy <laughs> new camera looking good looking good that camera boy number two what's up dog good to see you guys welcome back welcome back the dreams for you take it i almost fall it's okay caught her so don't try to helene limbeck has a crush on me so Judy Borden. Who's the Helene She played Judy Borden in uh, Judy Borden down here in Welcome Back, Cotter. Yeah, she had a thing for me, so. What's Welcome Back, Cotter? Welcome Back, Cotter's a TV show, fool. Had a great week last week. We got our drivetrain installed in the 1969 Dodge Charger, the world famous freeway jump car, General Lee. John Buck got his 71 Challenger RT formal back roof car. That's the kind of weeks that we want to have every week at Graveyard Cars. Right now, I've got to get the guys motivated and in spirit to have another good day and a good week. So I'm getting ready to call them together in the cafeteria, whoop them up a little bit of coffee, and uh, make this another week in history at Graveyard Cars. Quote me on that, week in history at Graveyard Cars. So don't try to... Coffee! <laughs> The boys are coming in here in a minute. Got to get them fired up for the day. I've already had two. Getting our coffee going. Lily and Davey. Gentlemen, how are you? Good. Good, just whipping myself up a little something something there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so here's where we're at. Busy day. Smith Brothers are coming down to do the brush guard. Awesome. And the roll cage in the, oh, that's a quick heartbeat. In the uh, General Lee. Yep. So how are you doing for that? Will you be able to get that thing uh, in a position where they can get inside of it, do the roll cage, do that? Of course. Yeah, ready to go. We got Smith Brothers coming out. Uh, we just got all the suspension and engine in the car, so I still got to finish plumbing out the undercarriage. Then from there, I'll get it down on the ground, go ahead and get that dashboard installed, carpet, windows, glass, and just kind of work on the interior components. So I can get that, you know, all ready to go before they show up. Okay. Yep. I'll have it ready to go. Willie? Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure that's good at your age? That's good. It's good. Is it good? It's good. <laughs> how uh, how are you doing? Where? Who are you? I mean, I'm what Will. are you working on? Your will. Yeah. I'm getting ready to go do the final paint on the bird. Final paint on the super bird. Yeah. FJ5, limelight. Is it FJ5? It's FJ5. It's limelight. Super bird. What are you hmm. talking about? What color are you painting it? <laughs> What's yeah. left on it to do? I can come out if you need. And no, no, I'm good. I just got to get a shot. Mark shouldn't have coffee first thing in the morning. You know, we learned that when Alyssa used to make it for him first thing, and he's kind of backed off, but. Obviously, you see why we don't like him drinking too much coffee. Cousin Duct Tape, Dougie, is outside, working hard in the engine room, getting stuff that. done. I'm going to work oh. on a 440. Yeah. Does it ring a bell? OK. No. Yeah, 440 Challenger, one of 960, oh, seven Plum Crazy, DBC yeah. 2210 by PPG. Yeah. Uh, by Curious George, I just found out, is no longer curious. Oh, not, really? Will, not <laughs> that, obviously. He was asking me about if the quarter <laughs> extensions I for the CUDA are the same I as the Challenger. I can't wait to see George. I'm going to tell him. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> no longer curious. Mark's in the engine room working on the 440 for the Plum Crazy Purple Challenger. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the undercarriage on that, maybe get all the plumbing and everything done, get the control arms in, so it's all ready to go for whenever he's got all that suspension done. Boy, okay. how many shots of... Well... How many shots has that one got? What was the question again? How many shots? That's three, but I did it twice, <laughs> so... Three, six... So this is nine! <laughs> what? Yep. Is he, is he gonna make us a coffee? <laughs> I don't think so. You're spinning like a freaking top this morning, man. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> now that we're done with our ridiculous meeting, I'm gonna head out there, get the paint mixed up, and get the bird shot. I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the assembly of the 440 Magnum engine that we're getting ready to finish out. Now, this is the engine that goes in our purple 70 Challenger RT444 speed car. It's got the short block built out, so that means the rotating assembly is built out. The crankshaft, the rods, the pistons, they're all in place. It's time now to do timing chain, cylinder heads, all the rest of the trim on the outside. And there's so many intricate little pieces that have to go on now before the engine gets painted that will allow us to be able to install like the spark plug wires and where they go, the looming and the routing of them. And that's important to know because a lot of the engines dress out differently from year to year and from engine to engine and transmission to transmission. So with the rotating assembly done, I'm gonna put the timing chain and gears on. The timing chain and gears are going to synchronize the camshaft that you see here with the crankshaft down here. The timing of these two rotating assemblies is crucial. You've ever heard the, the term, I broke a timing chain or we threw a timing belt. When that happens, the camshaft and the crankshaft are no longer synchronized, they're spinning at a different time. And on some engines, they're called interference engines, it, if it spins when the piston's at the top and the valve opens up, it'll bend the valve, break the piston, cause galactic problems. These are a non-interference engine, so they won't do that. They'll just leave you walking. So this is our double roller timing chain and gear set. You see, I've kind of got them laid together. This chain has two sets of rollers on it. That's why they call it a double roller timing chain. This is a steel gear on the crank, and this is a steel gear that goes on the camshaft. The other thing to make note of, and I'll show you as I put it on the engine, you'll notice that there's a locating dot on the crankshaft gear, and there's a locating dot on the camshaft gear. Those two have to be synchronized perfectly. If those two are lined up, when this slides over the keyway, and this pin lines up on the camshaft, we have perfect timing. So we're gonna take the crank gear out, and we're gonna slide it over, you see this keyway, there's a keyway here for it. That's gonna slide on there and just get started right around there. Now I've already aligned this up so it should slide together right. Again, you'll notice that we got our dot on the crankshaft gear right at 12 o'clock. And now we're gonna come in and line up this dowel hole with this dowel on the camshaft. And when that happens, it's gonna put this dot on the bottom, it should. So we have to slide this on there first onto the crank gear like that and then we have to slide it in to right there I've got my pin going through there I'm going to use my bolt to tighten it down that's a 5 8 what I want to do is rotate that around one time make sure that our marks are still lined up after it makes a revolution you see we're at 12 and at 6 right there so what I should do is make a complete revolution around here, and those will still be lined up. There you go. So with our timing chain and gears in place, we can put our timing cover on next. After we put the timing cover on, we'll rotate the engine upside down, install the oil pan, rotate it back around, and finish building it out. Stay tuned, Mark continues to educate us on building out a 440 and some very special enthusiasts install the roll cage and push bar on our legendary General Lee. I'm excited, Larry just got here today. Uh, he's gonna put the headliner in our generally. Uh, 
Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong whenever you're installing a headliner. Uh, Larry, with all those years of experience, makes it look really easy, uh, but there can be problems with the bows being the wrong size. Uh, some of the holes don't line up. You're missing clips, missing screws, stuff like that. But I kind of prepare everything ahead of time for Larry, so it makes it that much easier for him. A uh, guy does fantastic work. He makes it look so easy. I've put these headliners in, so I know how hard they are. Uh, so it's great having Larry on board. Now that we got the headliner finally put in the General Lee, uh, I can start doing a lot of interior work, upper reveal moldings, back window moldings, uh, visors, upper windshield moldings. So there's a lot of stuff I can get done. You know, one of the things that's probably most frustrating for me is I'm just a, a car guy. I want to work on cars. I like sharing how the 440 goes together. I'm just getting started on it. And because I do wear more than one hat, I've got to go order some parts. So right now I'm getting ready to uh, place an order for our 1969 426 Hemi, which came out of a Roadrunner. Um, this is a really nice car. This car has a lot of... Uh... <laughs> thought I got rid of you. Hey, Mark. Just pay no attention to them. How you, you just, doing? Yeah, no, come on in. Barge on in. Make yourself at home. Oh, God. Johnny, how you doing, buddy? I want to talk to you about a car. You've got two of them already. I want a Challenger. You've got a Challenger. <laughs> I want another Challenger. I want it just like it. And I love my car. You know, it's all original, everything. Oh, bought it brand new and everything. And I thought, you know what? It'd be cool to build another car with a Hemi in it. You want another challenger like the one you have? Exactly. Did you have a stroke? I'm thinking, I'm going, you know, a couple of years ago, they came out with the Hellcat motor and the new Challenger. Well, mine's a Challenger, so why don't I build a new car, or an old car, with a new car motor, but I want the Hellcat motor. 707 horse, you know, we get the eight speed with it. You can't beat it. When I pull up these two cars alongside, somebody's gonna say, oh, you got two cars the same. I go, no. Okay. I'm gonna open up the hoods and I'm gonna say, there's a difference in these cars. It's nice to know some people never grow up. <laughs> no. You wanna do the old rope-a-dope. You yep. wanna go out and cause trouble with that crap box 383 and then set up a race and then go get the hell <laughs> go get, Go get the right car to race it and I'm, I'm in town. You know, I love all of our customers. I think they're great people, and they, and they appreciate, even though I run late oftentimes, I always hit the mark for quality, efficiency, and budget. I was just starting to think I'm getting out of the woods. Your charger's getting close. Um, in the case of John Buck, great guy, got his car done a little bit later than normal, but I worry about him because I think he forgot how to get home. Yeah. I can have five or six years to do it, or? Yeah, November. November. <laughs> okay, I get it. I understand. Buck saw me last year at SEMA up on the stage with the president, Mr. Pietro Gorlier, and he wants a little piece of the kid's candy. He wants to be the ice man for a day. I understand. He wants a piece of the pie. Fortunately, it's all my pie. If you're just goofy, just bat dung goofy in the head and you've lost all your senses of up and down, left and right, is that, well, I don't think you need a doctor. I think you need a priest. You know, I'm, I'm very conservative about the things that we do here. John's like a friend, he's a client. I was, a, I had my reservations about showing him the SEMA car because I knew he'd go bananas. He went bananas. Oh, Jesus. How'd you get it? 392. Is that a that's bad boy or what? A, that's a bad boy. That gorgeous. Jesus. Yeah. It just looks like it was meant to go in there. It fit. It fits. It fits better than the 440 it come from the factory with and a lot better than the Hemi does. Uh, you know, I've got to really take everything into consideration. I, I walk around the SEMA car and I'm remembering some of the steps that had to happen. I'm also remembering some of the steps that didn't have to happen. But if you look underneath there, everything other than that engine is original looking 71 stuff. You'd think it's a, you'd yeah. think it left the factory like this. If you look here, we've got the, the fender louvers in it. These are all the original fender louvers that you see uh, on the 71s plus the, the wheel and tire Tires. combination. Match. And take a look at this, 392. Oh, did you have that put in? I right had in? that made, <laughs> had it made, yeah. Have a seat in that bad boy. Now, as I begin to flesh it out a little bit in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, it's not impossible. It is, it's it's a possibility at this point. Does that oh, feel I'm good ready. or what? <laughs> I'm ready. That feels good, doesn't it? Wow. That's what we're talking about. Six wow. forward gears, one reverse, badass 
hard driving machine. You'll have to take it out. It's a it's a bad son of a gun. Yeah, you does can that tell. feel good though? Oh, it does. I like the way an e-body sets. It's like it's ready to go. Reminds you of your car, probably. Exactly. <laughs> but I think this has got a few more ponies underneath the hood. A couple. A couple. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a couple hundred. And this is a lighter car too. And it is lighter because all that stuff's lighter. Yes. Got aluminum heads on it. It's a small block. It's not a big block, so. Oh, this is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. That is really neat. Yeah, I need to be going down the road in this. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just get your check out and write it. And it. As a businessman and a shop owner, you want to be careful with what you promise. And I don't want to end up making promises that I can't keep, all right? It's better to under-promise and over-deliver than over-promise and under-deliver. So I've got to think about it, make a couple of phone calls. I'm going to call Jenkins down at Magnaforce to see how practical it is for us to be able to get the things that we need to be able to hit this mark. Then I'll call John a little later tonight uh, and let him know what my thoughts are on it. Hopefully we can get this deal happening and, and we'll all be happy, especially me. It does haul ass though, let me tell you. It does haul ass. <laughs> uh, so right now we have our 1970 Tribute Superbird in the booth, masked up, ready for its final paint. This car is going uh, sublime green. I wasn't a huge fan of it in the beginning, but it is different than the normal greens we do. So for that reason, I do like it. I'm kind of getting tired of greens. We've been just, it just doesn't matter the shade, how bright it is, dark, light, it doesn't really matter. It's just everything for the past six months has been green. So it'll be nice to move on to a different color after this one's done. The only time I have issues is when I have Mark. Uh, Mark's comedy doesn't work that well. It actually just kind of slows things down. He is funny. I mean, I'll, I'll give him credit. A lot of his stuff is really good, but a lot of the stuff's very repetitive. So him peeking in the booth every single time I paint, all that little nonsense, um, I'd rather just do without. What color was the generally painted for the Dukes of Hazard TV show? Was it A, Big Bad Orange, B, Hemi Orange, or C, Corvette Flame Red? Find out after the break. So what color was the generally painted for the TV show? It was Corvette Flame Red. Um, apparently they had some issues with the color and the framing of it. I don't know, you can look all that up on your own time. I'm getting ready to install the grill in the General E. The General E, or 69 Dodge Charger, was one of the most popular making models of the Chargers. They came out in 66 and 67 with the Fastback. 68, they went to that body style, and then by 69, it was super popular, and then by 1970, it was even more popular. But being that the General Lee was so iconic, uh, as far as the TV show, you know, car, that uh, I think the 69 uh, was just so popularized later on in life, because everybody wanted that, that General Lee car, so they wanted the 69 Dodge Charger. Uh, the eye molding in the, in the 69 Dodge Charger grill used to be impossible to find. And what I'm referring to when I say eye molding is like the very nose piece molding that goes straight up and down and then crosses on the top. Some call it eye molding, some call it nose molding. But it used to be really impossible to find. And thank goodness for reproduction parts, they come with the entire grill piece. You gotta order that eye molding separate and then the rest of the pieces go in. I believe it's like seven pieces total. So it's so fantastic that they got all those reproduction parts so we can make this grill look brand new and beautiful. Speaking of Dodge Chargers, did you know that they attempted to revive the Charger model back in 1999? The beautiful Charger concept was powered by a 4.7 liter V8, which was fitted to run on compressed natural gas, sending its power to the rear wheels. It was designed to make the 3,000 pound Charger go from zero to 60 in a mere 5.3 seconds, which would have bettered the eventual and very real 2004 Hemi Charger. The compressed natural gas system included pressure cells inside of a fiberglass storage tank lined with a gas impermeable, high density, polyurethane thermoplastic, wrapped in a mix of high strength carbon and tough glass filaments, wrapped with an epoxy resin. 
The natural gas produces 25% less carbon dioxide than gasoline and lessens the dependence on foreign oil. Even though it was fairly popular, because it would have likely been a one-off car, the concept was archived. All right, now that the Charger grill's installed in our General Lee, I can move on and, and finish up the interior. Okay, now that we have the timing cover on, we're ready to put the oil pan on, which also requires on all the high performance engines, the windage tray. This right here is the very reason the 440K members and the 426 Hemi K members and the 446 pack K members all had to have mm -hmm. the skid plate on them. It was because this hung down below the K member when it was in the car and you could nail that, punch a hole in it and you'd be in big trouble. So they ended up putting the uh, skid plate on the K members for those. Okay, before I lay the first gasket down, I always use a little bit of sealer. We like the right stuff, it works really good. I like to hit the seams right here where we have a rear main seal and a little bit up here at the front. And that fills those gaps nicely. It's okay if it hangs out a little bit. After that, we can use our high tack because this is a machined finish. This is a nice clean surface. This doesn't need to fill any gaps in. That's why I like this product right here. This is called high tack it's one of my favorites. So there we have our first coat of that on. So now we're ready for our first gasket. We'll put that on, you'll notice this cutout right here. This cutout is designed for the pickup tube on the driver's side of the block. This goes into place. Line up all your holes, that high tack will hold it in place. If you get these holes off a little bit and you start stacking gaskets and windage trays, you can cause a problem. You can cause a bolt to start out cross-threaded. You can cause a leak between the two if it doesn't have a good seal. And now we're gonna put some on this part of the gasket. The next thing that we're gonna put on is the actual windage tray itself. The windage tray also has a provision in it, this notch right here. This also accommodates our pickup tube and it also serves as an alignment reference. So it slides underneath the pickup tube and forward to there. Okay, with all that in place, we're ready for another shot of gasket material on that. Just keep doing it, don't I? Like a, like a hyena, like a crazy hyena. Mark continues to educate us on building out a 440. And here soon, some very special enthusiasts install the roll cage and push bar on our legendary General Lee. I had to finish getting some stuff plumbed out on our 69 Dodge Charger uh, General Lee. Uh, so now I can move on to installing the interior. Yeah, this particular car, I mean, it's not just a, a reproduction of the General Lee. This is an actual General Lee, number 127, that did the freeway jump. Longest jump a General Lee's ever made, you know, even though it was catapulted. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to actually work on a real, live, General Lee movie car like that, and then the one that made the longest jump. So that's totally awesome. Uh, the General Lee kind of uh, has a spot in my heart because as a kid growing up, my brother, sister, and me, and my dad, my mom, we all sat in front of the TV prime time and watched uh, Dukes of Hazzard. Uh, being able to work on a General Lee and, you know, kind of brings back that childhood memory is, is awesome, so. Mark continues to educate us on building out a 440. And here soon, some very special enthusiasts install the roll cage and push bar on our legendary General Lee. Grab the next gasket, which is here. 
we'll want to line up this recess here for our uh, pickup tube and set that one down. And now we're ready for the last component, which is the oil pan. But what do we want to do? We want to seal this against that pan. Here we go. Now here's our oil pan. These are brand new oil pans. It's not full of dents and dings like you see so many cars. I mean, it's hard to drive them without having something happen to them. These are nice and new. This is going to slide down into position, position like that. Forward, line up your holes. I have all brand new fasteners to hold that oil pan on. They have a, a Loctite built into them like the factory did. That little dot of yellow actually goes into a recess into the bolt itself. And when this goes down into place, it locks it. It gives it an extra ability not to vibrate out. So I wanna lock down my outside corners. Now your oil pan is on. While we have it turned up right here, I'll go ahead and install the oil pump. We use a high volume oil pump. This increases the amount of oil that the engine can get through it. We have our pump and our brand new correct bolts. That is a factory duplicate bolt with the original black phosphate finish on it. So I want to put a little sealer on there. This has two things we got to do. One, put a little bit of oil right here on the seal, a little assembly lube, as it goes down into this crevice in the block, and we don't want to tear that rubber seal. And the other thing we want to do is put a little bit of sealer on that so that it'll grab. Remember that you want to put your oil filter on from the front. We'll slide that into position. That should drop down there like that. This is the long one, goes through here. And now the bottom of your engine is built out and ready to rotate up and finish out the rest of the build. I'm um, getting ready to install the, the upper control arms on our 70 Dodge Challenger, Plum Crazy Purple, a uh, four-speed car. Uh, either I get them all installed, and so whenever Mark gets the engine built out, the 440 Magnum and all the suspension and everything, I already got the control arms in place, so when it goes in, we just drop them right onto the spindles and it's a done deal. Speaking of Challengers, do you know all the various models of Dodge Challenger? Dodge was planning on 200,000 sales, so they came up with several different option packages to help get them to that milestone. The model year started out with the Challenger Highline, and it was available in almost every trim and luxury option. The base engine was a slant six, but the starter V8 was a 340, producing a rate 275 horsepower and 340 pounds per feet of torque at a low 3200 RPM. One unique package was the Western Sport Special, which was based on the High Line with a pedal dress-up kit, a vinyl top, and the Western Sport application on the rear quarter panel. They were only available to the San Francisco and Los Angeles sales regions, with most built in Los Angeles and only a few having been built at the Hamtramck plant. There was the Dodge Challenger Deputy, which was a lower price package and were devoid of amenities such as air conditioning, power steering, or power brakes, and interestingly also use base Barracuda seats. Of course, there is the Challenger Special Edition with the formal rear window, overhead consulate, and leather seats. And finally, the Dodge Challenger RT and Challenger TA. The Challenger TA was based on a Highline but featured a special 290 horsepower 340. The Challenger TA was created because they had to make retail cars for the vehicles used in motorsports. Just like Daytona's had to be made for retail for NASCAR, Dodge had to make 2,400 Challenger TAs to support one SCCA racing car. And finally, the Challenger RT. It's what makes the Challenger memorable. The most coveted of the lineup being the 426 Hemi, rated at 425 horsepower, and its sibling, the 446 barrel, rated at 390 horsepower. All right, our uh, 70 Dodge Challenger is all ready for its engine as soon as Mark gets it done in the machine shop. True or false? 
When you're painting a metallic such as our 1970 Plum Crazy Purple Challenger, you want to maintain a horizontal pass from top to bottom all the way through to the clear coat. Find out after the break. So do you or do you not keep the horizontal passes through a metallic? The answer is false. On the last coat on a metallic, I always go to about a 90 degree angle to help maintain uh, the evenness of the metallic all the way through the paint job. With the engine rotated back around, we can install the fuel pump, cylinder heads, intake manifold, and the rest of the pieces that go on with it. And there are some crucial pieces that need to go on now before you torque the heads down. But let's start out with the 4845 Carter fuel pump. In this case, you'll see a couple of things. So the 4845 has this fitting on it, and this accepts the lower fuel pump line that's designed for the 3 8 This side uses a clamp that holds it on. This is the part that comes from the fuel tank. I just finished working on our 70 Dodge Challenger, so now I'm gonna jump back onto the General Lee, uh, get all the interior all prepped up. We got a couple guys coming out to help us put the roll bar and the push bar in. The first thing I wanna put in is our fuel pump relay rod. This runs up against the camshaft, transfers every time the lobe on the cam comes around and hits this, it pushes it down. When it pushes it down, this is in place. It engages this pump arm, it goes down and up, and that creates the fuel pressure. So this will transfer all the way up through the block and onto the actual camshaft itself. This needs to go in first before we put our fuel pump in. It's a nice blob of grease on there. That'll hold it up into the cavity. It goes up into this hole here, and then there's a matching one inside the block. Then we have our hex-headed cap screw. There's our thread sealant. Put this in here. Got a little crazy with it that time, but that's okay. Now we are ready for the fuel pump gasket and the fuel pump. Gasket. Just like that. So this goes in to there, but it will not compress all the way. I have to use the bolts to suck the fuel pump down into place. So the next thing is the cylinder head. take our cylinder head gasket. You are now ready to set the cylinder head on. With the cylinder heads, you don't want to put any sealer on there. It's just the gasket and the bare metal. I'm going to put one bolt in here to hold that in place. I'll run that down all the way. Over here on this table are the various spark plug wire separators. These are designed for the spark plug wires to clip into it and hold them in a nice sanitary way. Some of these go underneath the cylinder head bolts and that's what we've got to make sure is which bolt because if you put, if you torque your head down and you don't have that under it and you have to take that loose, you're gonna have to break it loose. I mean, I would recommend breaking all of them loose, replacing the head gasket and tightening them back down again. So take your time, lay everything out Find your instructions, which I see somebody couldn't wait to lose. Here they are. We identify them. This is a cylinder head. So let's find out which cylinder head it wants it on. I would say it's M, like Mark. Second head bolt on the right-hand side all years. Gonna go right there. See how nice that fits and it looks like it's supposed to be there? That way when those plug wires come down, they can loom into this and go to these two cylinders right here. Gets the short bolt. 
I know it doesn't get one under here, so I can go ahead and put that there. The other bracket right here bolts on the driver's side or the left-hand side, and according to the picture and according to the description, it's the third cylinder head bolt back. So that's gonna be this one right here. Then this one does not get one, so I can go ahead and put the bolt in it. Now all we have left is the heat shield for the spark plugs on the other side. Okay, all we have left is the number six and number eight heat shield. So the exhaust manifold, where it comes down through here, would be too hot for the spark plugs that go into the cylinder heads right here and here. So Chrysler designed this cool little setup, which again has to go underneath the cylinder head bolts. If you don't do it now, you'll be sorry because you're gonna torque everything into place. Okay, I'm gonna grab my electric ratchet and run everything down to about two or three pounds, and then we'll do the torque sequence. So basically, this is the sequence that I have to torque this at. It's from the inside out. So you got one, you have two, you have three, you have four, and it's jumping back and forth, top to bottom, then in the center, top, bottom, then in the center on the other side. So we're gonna work on that right now. Get the torque wrench out for maximum torqueage. It calls for 75 foot-pounds of torque, so what I do is I start out with the least amount I can put on it, which is about 45 pounds. Hear that? That's the torque. One, five, 10, and the last one, 17. Let's go do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now we're gonna change our torque all the way up to 75. And here we go. One. All right, cylinder heads, brackets, heat shields, all in place. Next thing we can put on is the intake manifold. Uh, the interior on the General Lee is coming together nicely. I'm just getting ready to put the door panels on. The upper pads can be a total pain in the ass. Uh, they got to line up just right in the holes. A lot of times the clips will bend, they won't snap in just right, but uh, I think I'm going to get her. Smith Brothers just showed up. Uh, they're gonna help us put the push bar on and the roll cage in the car. So uh, I'm gonna go grab Mark, because I know he's gonna wanna be part of this. We're two brothers that uh, grew up in the South watching uh, Dukes of Hazard and watching uh, muscle cars. And we provided the push bar, which is 2005 movie correct, and the roll bar, which is inside the car. So you put a lot more of these on than I have. We just come in here, and these go down through the upper brace, is that right? Yeah. Okay, and then uh, and then the bottom one bolts onto this lower dog bone. Is that what it? It, bolts it just bolts to the bumper only. Oh, it only on bolts the, to the on bumper. the episodes. They would weld it to the bumper. The uh, wide push bar back in the day actually fastened to the frame, as my brother mentioned. And they actually brought it up and welded it to the front bumper. Well, now people who uh, buy generally clones uh, don't want uh, push bar welded to their bumper. So we actually engineered a little tab bracket that goes up under the bumper and attaches to the license plate holder area. We spent a lot of time getting that right. So we knew that bringing the push bar here today wasn't gonna pose any real serious problems. Um, maybe a, a slight shim here and there, depending on uh, how it looks against the grill and against the hood. But otherwise, it should just be a bolt-on deal. So it's serviceable, but you're not damaging your beautiful. Exactly. Product. Yeah, restoration that yeah, just you, got finished. You work too hard for us yeah, to hold on the bumper. That's a, yeah, I think I'd get a letter from Mike Gray at AMD saying, what are you doing to my bumpers? Well, here, I'm just gonna kinda, Isn't that nice? Throw my extra Magoo glasses yeah. on here and keep an eye on things. I've earned the position of supervisor these days. Yeah. So this is, a, this is a pattern off of the exact movie car push bar. 
And it's also, I started in the jig from AJ Thrasher from the episodes, because it was supposed to look like the episode right. first bar. Right, right. So it's kind of a... It's a hybrid of the two. It's a hybrid of the two. Which is kind of what the owner of the car wanted. He wanted like mm -hmm. the best of both worlds. Give yes. me some of the old car stuff from the show, right. and give me a little of the new movie stuff. So I, right. we're trying to do that. Are we okay? Yeah, you guys can... Oh, uh, sure, you're all Whoops, six foot get... tall. That must be nice. Yeah. Well, it's not good from here. Would you like a ladder? So you can... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, it's a shame. That's a shame. On the episodes, usually this bar would be right in line with the, with the trim and right between the hood. Okay. So oh, I can say we, tighten it up. It's just, just a visual alignment, just a compromise between the grill yeah. and the hood. That should have helped right there. Uh, today was actually a very productive day. Started off good with some coffee. Did you ever get your coffee? I, I never did get my I, coffee. I, I apologize. <laughs> I may have forgotten about your coffee. Yeah. I get a little wound up when I'm in there and have a few shots of that. Hey, the cool thing was the Smith Brothers came out, we got the push guard, uh, the front brush guard put on our General Lee. Yep. And the transformation, just going from a 69 orange charger with some decals on it over to this, you can tell it's a General Lee now, is a, is a real transformation. So great job having everything laid out and ready to go for that. And they also uh, gave us a hand with the roll oh, bar. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. yeah, yep. yeah, absolutely. The yep. roll cage got put in. So we're about to put the roll bar in the car and make sure that the plates fit the floor and make sure it stands up straight. Go right in, angle in right above the steering. I got this side, Bobby. Okay. Oh, wow. That's too cool, huh? Look at Go that. ahead and hold it. I'll back up. <laughs> wow, it clears the dome line. And that's what I was worried about was the dome line. Right. That's great. Yeah, really tricky to put in. You got to put it in in place, bolt the plates down, weld the hoop on. And so that's a little scary whenever you got the interior almost completely yeah. installed in the car. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. In some of the early episodes, they had some braces because they were actually functional cages, but then later they got it, when they got everything streamlined and started getting consistent looking cars, they only had the bar. Yeah. But when you that's do right. it that way, it's not crooked and it's really solid. Yeah, that's right. That's awesome. Yeah. This is a very good representation. As a matter of fact, I can't see anything on the car that I would change or even recommend to be changed. Uh, whoever uh, owns this car has something to be proud of. Thanks, James. Nice work. Very That's nice awesome. to meet awesome. you. Very nice to meet you, too. Yeah, really awesome to have them out there. They had the actual jig from the, That's what they were from saying. the movie That's... cars to build that. So they could make that basically identical to the one that's in the movie, which is really, that's a kudo, you know, and the, and the brush guard as yeah. well. I believe they had a jig for that. So, yeah, so, yeah fantastic on that. And did you see who else came back? Apparently lost. Oh, yeah, John Buck. John of Buck course. came back. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. think John Buck's just crazy. John wants an identical twin to his 71. Identical. Green go, black top, formal back roof, overhead console wow. But, and the same Kragers, except he wants it with a 392 Hemi and an automatic in it. I wasn't sure by the end of the day if I was gonna come to you and say, we're gonna pass on it or if we're gonna play. But just so you know, I've already gave John Buck the word we're gonna play. Good. I think we're I like gonna that. make it. So, yeah. yep, I think push hard. Yeah. Promise the moon and deliver what you can. I'm yeah. kidding, not really. Basically, I got all the parts handled from Ron. They're coming. Uh, that's the only real deadline, other than I want to finish the 440, get it put in the car so we can get that shit back to the new owner because he's anxious to get it. But overall, not too many forest fires, so that's a good thing. Yeah, but uh, we got the owners for the General Lee coming out next week. Next week. That's not next week. Oh, God, that's next week? Yeah. For the... Don't put that.